Good morning. Welcome to Gear City Church. We love that you're here with us in person and online. Um, so let's give it to God today by raising our hearts and raising our hands in worship. Please stand. Nothing. 
It's time for the sleeper to wake. It's time for the old winds to change. Oh, I hear the Spirit say, it's time. It's time for the dead man to rise. It's time for the great light to shine. Oh, I hear the Spirit say, it's time. all about inviting him into this place. So let's do that together as we sing this. Open up the windows. Come on. Open up the windows. Let the light open up the windows. Let the light open up the windows. Let the light, let the light, let the light open up the windows. Let the light open up the windows. Let the light open up the windows. Let the light, let the light, let the light open up the windows. Let the light open up the windows. Let the light open up the windows. Let the light, let the light, let the light open up the windows. Let the light open up the windows. Let the light open up the windows. Let the light, let the light, let the light. Open up the windows, let the light open up the windows, let the light open up the windows, let the light let the light let the light in wide heavenly gates, let the king of glory in, let the king of glory in, come right in, 
let's just say thank you for what he's done this morning. I want to say thank you, thank you. I have to say thank you, thank you. Can help us say thank you, thank you. We thank you this morning for all you've done for us this morning. Father, I'm reminded this morning of the good things that you've brought us through. God, in every season you've been there. And so, Father, we just honor you today and we say that, that you've always been there. Our amazing God. We thank you this morning. In Jesus' name. Good morning, Gear City. We are so thankful that you guys are here today, that you started your week off here uh, with us this morning. So whether you are in person today or you're online, 
Thank you for being here. Drop down in the comments. Let us know where you're watching from. Let us know what you're up to today. We want to just make a connection with you today. And I cannot believe we have just a week left of October. We have had an awesome month here at Gear City. We started off the month with a serve day at SNT. We've had nine baptisms this month. We've had nine child dedications this month, not to mention the several, several guest families that have come and visited. We've had some more people, newer people watching online. We've been able to mail out and give out in person several start to follow packets. So that's amazing. That's life change. And that's why we do what we do. So um, we're excited to continue in this series that we're in called Good News. And you can always go back. You can watch the replays of week one and two on our Facebook page. You can go to our website. Uh, first week, we talked about just what is the good news. And so we just went over the fact that the good news is the gospel. And the good news is your story. You may not think that, but the good news is how God has changed you. You turn around and you share that with other people. In Romans 1, Eddie read the scripture the first week, it says, I am not ashamed of the good news because that shows us how we are right in God's sight. And so here at Gear City, we try to con convince the unconvinced. We try to create the atmosphere that will bring those unconvinced people in. It is then our decision. It's their decision to accept God, but that's the good news. And then last week, we talked about how did Jesus share the good news? And above all else, he loved people regardless. It didn't matter of their background or what they were doing in the moment. Jesus loved them. We talked about Paul and his missionary journeys and how he reached people who had never heard the good news before. And Paul himself, if you don't know that, he had a really big transformation. And so you can go back and listen to Eddie's message from last week. You can dive into the Bible, into the Word, and you can hear about his story that he was able to use as good news for other people. So today's week three, and we want to share this point is, is what is the key to sharing good news? And that's all about relationships. And so that's what we're going to talk about today is what is the key for you to be able to share the good news? And it's all about having um, relationships with other people. But the first relationship we have to build is that with God. And so I want to mention that first and foremost because that is the most important thing. If you don't have a relationship with God today, my hope, my prayer is that you don't leave this place, you don't click off of this video before you decide to start that relationship with God. We've been invited to start walking with God, or, or maybe you've already started, and we've been invited to continue walking with God, just like Adam and Eve. So in the very first book of the Bible in Genesis, it talks about Adam and Eve, and it explains the whole story about the garden. But in chapter 3, verse 8, it says something pretty profound. It says that Adam and Eve recognized the sound of God walking in the garden because they were familiar with it. So I got to thinking about the fact that they knew what it was like to walk with God. So that's my question for you today. Do you know what it's like to walk with God? Do you have that close of a relationship with God to say, I walk with him. I do life with my God. And as we begin to form that relationship with God, we are called to do God's work here on this earth with God, right? We're not called to just go to work or do life, but we're called to do God's work with him by our side. The message of the cross that we speak about is not just about don't go out there and sin, right? The message of the cross is about come walk with God. So many, so many people think that. Oh, the Bible just says don't sin, don't do this. But it's not all about that. It's about come walk with God. Come experience God. So yes, we're forgiven. We're new creations. We've done the baptism. We've, people have said, man, I have a new life and I'm going to live it to the fullest. That is the good news, but it's so much more than just that. God is more to us than a command not to sin. God is more to us than just a ticket to heaven. So is God more to you than that? Ask yourself that today. Do you have a relationship with him where you grow daily, every single day? You're opening up the good news. You're reading about him. You're communicating with him. I'm sure you communicate with your spouse on a daily basis or your kids or your best friend. It's just like that with God. The good news says come and enjoy God. Continue to just walk with God here on this earth. There is an eternity that we're going to get to, but we're here. We're now, right? We share the good news now. We're called to make God known in this world. And I love that because that's so powerful is that we are called on a daily basis 
to make God known. And we do that just by living our life every single day, just by setting an example for the people that are around you. That's one of the things we say every single day on the way to school is we pray that the girls will set, my girls will set an example for every person around them, no matter who it is. And they do that by shining God's light, by building relationships with the people that's around them. And I can promise you, when that Holy Spirit is inside of you and he's guiding you, people will know it and they will see it. They may not know what they see, but they're going to see that there's something different about that person. I want what's inside of them. We were having a discussion with Gracie a couple weeks ago because she had decided she wanted to get baptized, and we wanted to make sure she truly understood what baptism was and made the decision before she got baptized. And so she understood all of that, and then she said, but I just don't know about going around to other people and just talking about Jesus with everyone. I'm just a little nervous about that. And so James explained to her, you don't have to get in front of a group of people and talk about Jesus. You don't even have to go one-on-one and bring up Jesus in every conversation. You just live your life in a godly way in front of them. And I could tell for her that was very comforting because she is not my outgoing child. And so it's just like that to us. Like Eddie said, you don't have to, you know, go get a bullhorn and run through the streets and shout, you know, Jesus has has saved me. We share the good news by just talking about the gifts of God. And I thought about that, talking about the gifts of God on earth. So many people just think, I want to get to heaven, and I do want to go there. I want to go there, but we should share the gifts that God has on this side of eternity. You can look at the world, so many people look at the world, and they can see it's just stained with sin, right? You can look around and find all the bad things. A lot of people get captivated by the bad news that's in the world today. But here's the amazing thing, is that we can also look we can see and we can experience how far God will go for us. If you read back to the, go back to the story and you read the story in Genesis with Adam and Eve, the serpent went to Eve and he tried to get Eve to doubt God. God had told Eve, do not eat of this tree, right? Don't eat of this tree and explained why. And the serpent said, oh no, that's not the real reason, right? He tried to get Eve, even though she had God's word. But the thing about Eve is she didn't really have the experience like we do. We have the experience to be able to back up God's word, to be able to back up the promises that he showed us, that he's explained to us, that he's told us in his word. We know how far God will go, and so many other people need to hear that, but it's up to us to share that. Last week, we were singing a song, and this came to me on a Sunday morning. I was thinking, God will use the good, the bad, and the ugly. We may think that there are ugly times in our life, and God's going to use those, right? God is going to use us when we are on our mountaintops. God is going to use us when we're in our valleys, the lowest of the low. God's going to use your sickness. God is going to use your healing. So many times we think God can only use the good but he can also use the things that we go through to help us to reach other people, to build those relationships. He's going to use the things we went through in our past and the things that are still yet to come that we don't even know that we're going to face. We know that God is not holding out on us, right? But we have to share that with other people. I actually wrote it. We get the opportunity to share that with other people. And so as we build these relationships, the Lord has given us some instruction in his, in his word. And so the scripture I'm going to share is actually out of the ICB, and I looked that up, and that's the children's Bible, but I thought it was no plain or written in any other translation. So this is what I'm going to read is Micah 6, 8. It says, do what is right to other people. Love being kind to others and live humbly, trusting your God. I love just how basic that's written, right? It gives us instruction. And so there's this saying that says, you do you, right? Especially in the last couple of years, you hear this all the time. You do you. Don't worry about other people. Don't worry about all the things that are going on in the world. Just you do you. And that sounds good in the beginning because what that typically means is just do what makes you happy. Don't worry about other people. Do what makes you happy. But that also means other people should be doing what makes them happy, which again sounds good until they do something that doesn't make you happy, right? Or what if I do something 
because it makes me happy, but it hurts someone else, or it doesn't make them happy, which in reality, if you read this scripture, God has a better plan. He tells us to do what's right for other people. It's all about community. It's all about building relationships with other people. So when we do this, what's right to other people, when we love other people and we're kind to them, we learned about this in the last series. We talked about idols and how sometimes we can build an idol of ourselves, right? But God wants us to know that living the life that he set out before us is not all about us. It's about God. It's about other people. He created us to show everyone around us how amazing and how full of love that he is. He created us to share this good news. And we do this by treating other people like Jesus did, with love and with kindness. Jesus went around and he built relationships. Did he have to? Probably not. But that's what he was called to do. And so as you begin to build these relationships, you might get anxious about sharing the good news, or some of you might be overzealous, and you think, oh, I'll go out and talk to anyone about God. But I heard in an audio, audible book once that said, you're going to have a ministry of tears sometimes before you're going to have a ministry of truths. So you're going to start building relationships with people, and they might only need you to be a shoulder to cry on at first. They might be going through something that they begin to trust you so much that they just open up to you. And so they might need that before they're ever going to even think about listening to the good news you have to share. And that's okay, because all along the way, they're going to see Jesus shining through your life. So they're going to see your actions before they hear your words. And that's okay. So know that you need to build those relationships. So I ask you today, who can you just be kind to today? Who can you pick out to begin to build a relationship? Or maybe you have that and you just need to strengthen that relationship. I'm going to ask you to pray about that today. Some of you might be thinking, that's a little, that's a stretch for me. Why would I pray about building that relationship? But God will bring people into your life that you will never even expect to be in there. I was texting people this week saying, thank you so much for bringing this person into my life because they mean so much to me. And had it not been for a third party, I would have never met these people because I had no connection to them. So pray about it. But let me just give you a little heads up that as you begin to pray and you begin to build these relationships, the devil is going to work harder, right? It's not going to be all roses and fun and a good time all the time. The devil begins to work harder. So this came to me as I was driving down the road, and I had to write it down, and I visited it multiple times. Don't be distracted by division, but be inspired by instruction, and that instruction being God's word, right? He instructs us as we read his word, and I got to thinking about that because not just the world as a whole, but all of us right now, there's so much division. If you sit down and think about, oh, my job, these people are saying this, or my family, or the people I used to be friends with, we cannot be distracted by that division. Because let me tell you, the enemy's goal, right, this is the number one goal is for people to never access the full life that's available to them through community and through relationships and through starting that one relationship with God. That is his number one goal. And I will tell you, the devil will throw in division in the relationships you have. The devil will go and throw in division in your marriage and in your job and in your relationship with your kids. That is the devil's job. That's what he's going to do. The devil's going to tell you, you don't need community. Maybe he's going to tell you that you're not good enough. You're below the community. Don't even try to fit in because you don't fit in. Or he might come around and say, you know what? You're too good. You're above that community. You're just too good for them. And let me tell you, both of those are a lie, right? Do not believe that. You are not too good for anyone, and you are not below anyone. God created us to have that community. The devil is going to try to make you set the standards in your life so high, right, or so unrealistic that you're not going to truly be able to see the people that are there for you to create a relationship with. And maybe it's that those people need you in their life. Or maybe it's that you need them. But you're going to set that standard so high that you can't even see the people that are surrounding you. The devil is going to remind you of the last time that you were in a relationship and you got hurt. 
he's going to remind you of the last time that you had that best friend and they turned their back on you. He is going to use your fears. He is going to use the wounds that have come against you, that have hurt you, to keep you from forming healthy relationships. So think about yourself right now. Are you in that funk where I just don't have friends or I I come and go and I don't need community? Let me tell you, that is the enemy working in your life because we were created to build those relationships, to share the good news. So we have to remind ourselves often of God's promises. We have to remind ourselves of God's word. I love in Psalm 119.11, it says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against God. You have to hide that word in your heart every single day. You have to be taking in his word so that you don't fall back into the enemy's trap. If you don't know this, the devil even tempted Jesus in the Bible. You can go back and you can read that story. But you know what Jesus used to come against the devil? God's word. Right? Just like we should. In Matthew 4, 4, Jesus tells the devil, no. That's his response. No, the scripture said, people do not live by bread alone, but they live by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. So if you're in that trap right now, you need to use God's word to come against the devil. It doesn't matter what the devil tries to tell you. God has equipped you. God has given you his word, and that is what you need to share the good news, to begin to maybe heal some relationships and mend relationships that were broken in the past. Luke 4.18 tells us, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring the good news. There are so many scriptures in the Bible about the gospel, about the good news. You can literally go Google them. It's so inspiring to know that the Spirit is inside of us. The Spirit has anointed us to bring the good news to other people. And we know it's not always going to be easy. I wrote it this way, is that comfort does not equal growth. And a lot of people aren't going to like that right there. I want to be comfortable. But we can't be comfortable all day, every day, and expect growth in our lives or expect growth in the people around us. You might think, oh, my kids need to grow or my spouse needs to grow. But if you're sitting comfortable and you're not stepping out of that comfort zone to help them, they may not go anywhere. Right, we got to get uncomfortable, even when it comes to sharing our faith, even when it comes to building those relationships. And as we step outside of our comfort zone, as we begin sharing, it's going to get exciting. I hope that you guys have had that experience where it has been so exciting in your walk with God that you can barely contain it. Because as you take that step of faith, God's going to use you in a way that he's never used you before. And yes, it might be uncomfortable, but after you do it, it's going to be so exciting. I can tell you for us as pastors and as leaders, it is so very exciting to get the text or to get the call from a newer Christian or a newer, newer leader that says, I just prayed for the first time for someone else, or I just talked to someone else for the first time about God. It is just such an exciting experience for that person. And then for us as leaders to say, they're getting it. They're getting it. They're building relationships. They know the first step in sharing the good news because it's not hard. It just takes that one step of faith. And here's the deal about being a Christian. It does not have to be boring. And that's where so many people fear even diving into God or even stepping into the doors of a church because they're like, oh, it's just going to be the same thing. Oh, it's just going to be boring. But instead of living a normal life or instead of living just this boring cookie cutter life, we should be out there and we should be living a supernatural life with God leading us. So in your seats, you guys have a cookie cutter, and I want you to take that, and I want that to be a reminder not to live a cookie cutter life because that is not what we're called to live. We're not called to live a boring life, just try to make it till the the time that God calls us home, right? We should be out there. We should be excited. When people are around you, it should be a fun time. I just went to a group on Friday night, and it was fun. It wasn't just go sit around and be bored for a couple hours. It was fun. People laughed. People shared. They were learning about each other. That's why we do groups is that we can get connected and we can have fun. So my question for you again is, are you responsive to sharing the good news? Everybody has the good news. You have it available to you. In a Bible, if you don't have one today, we will give you this today. 
You have the good news to share. You have your story to share. You don't have to go around and quote scripture. I don't care if you don't have one scripture memorized. That's okay. The good news is your story. How did God change me? That's what you begin to tell other people. But some of you today, maybe you've built up walls to sharing your faith. Maybe that's because you've been hurt before. You've been hurt one too many times. Maybe it's because you've tried to share the good news. You've tried to share your story, and you've been shut down, right? Or they just haven't listened. But let me encourage you and tell you, God can, and he will use you. And he will begin to work on the hearts of the people that you have in your heart to speak to. If we pray about it, God, work on that person. Soften their hearts. I pray that every single time I speak backstage, I begin to pray, God, soften their hearts to receive the word that you have today. Because these aren't my words. These are God's words. Right? He's given you a story. Remember that he's equipped you. He will begin to soften people's hearts so that you can share with them. So be inspired by God's word, the things that he tells us. If you go to Ezekiel 36, 26, that's in the Old Testament, it says this, I will give you a new heart. I will put a new spirit inside of you. I will take out your stony heart, your stubborn heart, and I will give you a tender and responsive heart. I love this scripture. Do you have a responsive heart? And it says, he will give you a new heart. So he will change. He will begin to change the desires of our heart over time. He will remove our heart of stone. So the walls will begin to come down, right? And then he says he will put a new spirit inside of us. The Holy Spirit inside of us will begin to inspire us. So I got to thinking if he would do that for me, and now I have a changed story, he's going to do that for other people. He's going to do that for the other people that I am trying to speak to. So don't walk around thinking that you can't share this good news. Don't walk around thinking that there are people out there that will never change. Some of us have probably said that, maybe all of us, they'll just never change. They're never going to change. It doesn't matter. You know, and there is a point where we have to let go and say, God, you do your work, but we can still pray for those people. We can still show them. God will do the impossible if we're willing to let him. Sometimes it's easier for to believe, like, you know, oh, God will do the impossible in that physical need, that healing that's needed. God will do the impossible in that financial need. But when it comes to us praying about people who haven't changed their life, sometimes we don't believe that he'll do the impossible. So I want you to think about who is it in your life today that maybe you've thought or you've said they will never change. Maybe that's the person God has laid on your heart to speak to, to share your story, to begin to show the life that you're living because God is inside of you. The only never you should focus on is that God will never let us down, that he will never leave us. In Deuteronomy chapter 31, it says it several times that God will never leave us. He will never fail us. He will never abandon us. So we need to let go of saying that person will never change or I will never be able to share the good news. If you will release what is in your hands, God will begin to release what's in his hands. So maybe in your hands today there's hurt. Maybe in your hands today there's sin. Maybe your hands are just full of comfort. You're comfortable today. But if you will release that, then you will see God pour out blessings. He's going to release his promises, and he's going to release life change. Right? There are people out there that are depending on you. I hope that gets in your spirit and gives you a check that there might be people in your life today that if you don't build that relationship with them, they might go to hell. You might be the only person that's going to share Jesus with them. So as we release what's in our hands, what's holding us back, God is going to continue to build his kingdom through you. All right, just imagine the excitement you have, maybe you've had, 
when your child came to know Jesus or when the spouse that you have stuck by for years finally gave their heart to Jesus. God might be building the kingdom one by one through you, but eventually that adds up over time. So release what is holding you back so that God can use you. Go Time Sunday, we've been talking about that for three weeks now. It is a stretch, I know, for most people sitting in the seats, listening online. Go Time Sunday on November 7th. We are not having church in this building. There will not be a Sunday morning experience at either time. The goal for that Sunday is for you guys to do what we have been talking about. You are going to take the good news and you are going to do something. You are going to put your faith in action. You're going to live out your faith by doing something. Maybe you'll have the chance to share your story that morning, but maybe not, and that's okay. What we want you to do on this Sunday is find someone in your life. It could be a friend. It could be a family member, someone that doesn't go to church already, someone that doesn't know God, but maybe this will be the only chance you get to share a little bit or shine God's light because they won't come into church just yet, right? We want you to plan something that day. Maybe it's a coffee date. Maybe it's breakfast or lunch or dinner. Maybe you have a bonfire at your house or plan an out-of-town trip. Invite these people into your life just for a couple hours that day, and that's what you're going to do is you're going to do life. But as you do that, you're going to shine God's light through you. Michael Piva posted earlier this week on Facebook, and I loved it. It says, preach the gospel at all times, and if necessary, use words. I thought that was perfect for this Sunday, or that Sunday on November 7th, is that we will still preach the gospel that day. It may not be from the stage, but it's going to be with other people who don't know God, doing life with them. So it's up to you who you're going to ask. Eddie has asked us to pray about it, to fast about it, and to go for the ask. So begin praying if you haven't already. God, who can I invite to do life with that day? Who is it in my life that doesn't know you that I can be an influence on? Right? Fast. Give up food for a day, for an afternoon, for a morning. Say, God, I'm giving this up so that you would speak to me and you will tell me who I need to um, just do life with that day. Right? And then go for the ask. You might be turned down by one person. That's okay. Move on to the next person or the next family. You have to be intentional. God is going to open the door for the ask, right, if we're willing. He will begin. He has already begun to soften their hearts. And once you do this one time for November 7th, you're going to find out that it's a lot easier to do it as you continue on. Just to go up to some people and talk and say, hey, why don't you come over? It doesn't have to be a Bible small group, right? It can just be doing life together. So it is amazing to me. It is beautiful to me to see what God can do through us when we allow him. Eddie read this scripture last week, Romans 10, 15. How beautiful are the feet of the messengers who bring the good news. I love that scripture. Not because it's about feet, because I hate feet. (laughs) But I love what it implies, is as we take that step, as we begin to share the good news, it is so beautiful I can only imagine the smile on God's face as he sees us do the things that he's called us to do, to make him known in this world, to reach the people that seem unreachable, like Paul did on his missionary journeys, to love people that are unkind, like Jesus does, right? How beautiful are the feet of the messengers. And you might think, Well, what if I invite someone and then I mess up in the next two weeks? (laughs) That's okay. Right? That's why we have the grace. There is abundant grace when we come to God. Even if you stumble, even if you fall, there is grace waiting on the foot of the cross. God's grace is what redefines me. It redefines you. Maybe you're sitting here today and you think, I don't, I don't even know God. So forget this, go time Sunday, right? But that's okay because God's waiting for you. The enemy, he wants to define you by 
your scars, but Jesus wants to define you by his scars. We're not perfect. That is not what this series is all about. We're not going to be perfect. We're not going to go out there and share the good news and never mess up again. But that is part of the good news, is that you don't have to be perfect to be a follower of Christ. The good news about this victory is that it's not about us at all. It's all about God and what he can do for us. So I want to pray over everyone today. Um, I want to pray first and foremost for those that need a relationship with God. And I want to pray that God just continues to speak to your heart and and helps you realize the impact that you're going to have as you share the good news. So if you would, bow your heads today. Lord, we come to you and we give you all the glory today, God, for what you do in our lives, God, for who you are to us, Lord. I pray right now, God, for those who are here in person, those who are listening online, God, whether it's a month from now or a year from now, God, you know who needs to hear this word that is straight from you, God. I just pray for their hearts today, Lord, that they will take a moment to stop and just say, I'm sorry, God. I'm sorry for the things in my past. I'm sorry for the things that I'm currently doing, God, but I'm going to ask you for your help, Lord, to forgive me of my sins and your help to move forward, God, and to begin to walk with you, Lord, every day to grow in you, God, and become a stronger Christ follower, Lord. I thank you for these people, God, that you have brought into our lives here at Gear City. I just pray that we can be part of their journey, God, that we can encourage them and inspire them by teaching them the word of God. Lord, I pray that we can do life with them, Lord, and that then we take that and we begin to spread your good news, Lord, the story that you have equipped us with, Lord. We're each so different. But God, I pray that you are going to give us the boldness to step outside of our comfort zone and begin to reach those people in our lives that we've never reached before, maybe that no one has reached before, God. I pray that you place thoughts of people in everyone's mind that they can leave here today and begin to contact about Go Time Sunday or any other day of the week, Lord, that we can just build that community together, God, that we can lift each other up, Lord, I thank you for your grace. I thank you that we don't have to be perfect to share your good news, God. But I come to you and I ask you today, use me. Use us today, God. Show us who we can be a light to this week coming up, who we can be kind to, Lord. I pray that you just begin to soften those hearts, God. You begin to light the way for us to walk and know where we should be going. God, I thank you for your guidance today. I thank you for your love, God, and your forgiveness, God. I ask all this in your name. Amen. So I hope today, God, that God has put some thoughts of people into your mind and maybe some things stirring in your heart of what you want to do or where you want to go. And and maybe today you made that decision. And I held this packet up earlier, but this is called Start to Follow. We have so many of these packets to give out. We've been giving them out every single week, and it's so exciting. And so if you've made that decision to follow Christ today, and you think, I don't even know where to start, this is the perfect place. It's got a book, it's got a Bible, and you can begin here. It really walks you along that journey of following God, um, of being a Christ follower, and what that means. If you're online, just type start to follow, because we're going to put this in the mail tomorrow. I love putting these in the mail every single week to people. No matter where you live, we will get this in the mail. So we say congratulations if you made that decision today. If you're with someone that's made that decision, walk with them. Take them to the Start to Follow table in the back of the auditorium before you guys exit out of this room today. Um, We are so thankful that you're here. We love connecting with new families here at Gear City. We love just doing life. And so if you're newer here, if you're online for the first time, we want to say thank you. We want to connect with you. So if you're in person, there are three cards in the back of the seats. You guys can grab those. If you're online, you can click the links that will come up. Um, A guest card. All it is is basic information so that we can connect with you. We can let you know what's going on every single week 
Um, so if you want to fill that out, you can turn it in today. They'll give you a gift as you walk out of the building. If you're doing it online or if you're going to text the 94,000 to GC guests and you're not here, we'll put that in the mail tomorrow as well. And then if you're wondering, what's my next step? So I'm going to get this start to follow packet, but I need to be baptized and, and I want to dedicate my child or I want to serve. I want to get involved in this community. Fill out that next steps card or click that link and we will get you plugged in this week in your prayer request. Man, I love that group. We took time to really truly hear the prayer requests of the people in that group. I love when I see emails come in to prayer at gearcitychurch.com um, because we have a prayer team and they love to pray for you. They want to hear when those prayer requests are answered as well. So continually send us updates. Some of those are going to be short term. Some of them may be long term and that's okay because we want to pray over you guys. So those are ways that we can connect with you and we would love to do that in any way possible. If you have questions, I'll be out in the lobby. But before you're dismissed, check out this video real quick. Dear City Church, we're so glad that you guys chose to join us today. What a great message we just heard from Gina in talking about relationships and how important those relationships are in spreading the good news of the gospel. We want to give you an opportunity today as part of Gear City family uh, to be generous in your giving. We know that God says in his word that he blesses a cheerful giver. And I know that when you give from your heart, God blesses that abundantly. It is because of your giving, the reason that the ministry of Gear City Church continues to make a difference in people everywhere, just like we did a couple of weeks ago with our, our uh, outreach that we had at Missouri s and football game. Also, uh, families that we're able to help uh, who are suffering and going through difficult times. We just wanna say thank you because your investment is making a difference right here in our community. And today, we're gonna give you that opportunity to give. There are three ways that you can give at Gear City Church. You can, first of all, reach uh, in the seat back in front of you and grab an envelope. You're welcome to put cash or check in there. Also, you can give online. Online anytime at gearcitychurch.com, 24 hours a day. Our favorite way is text to give. And you can simply text the number 84321. And when you text that number, you can set up your text to give. Today, we wanna pray a blessing upon your giving and your heart for giving to God. So if you would bow your hearts with me today. Heavenly Father, I wanna say thank you for the abundance of our blessings. Lord, we give today out of a heart of love. We give out of a heart of, of passion for you and for the kingdom of God. Lord, we give today to support uh, the local church, which is the hope of the world. Father, we thank you for how you blessed us abundantly. And we give our tithe back to you today, a tenth, 10%, 10 Lord, back to the kingdom of God. I pray, Lord, that you'll bless every person that gives in whatever format they may give. We thank you for your blessings and we give cheerfully today in Jesus' name, amen, amen. We say thank you for giving today. We wanna to tell you about some great things coming up at Gear City Church. Now for all of you uh, who are married, those who would love to go on a date night, Gear City Church Family Ministry loves to provide date night for all of you. So coming up on November the 5th, on a Friday night, it's gonna be date night, and you can drop your kids off right here at Gear City Church from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Go out on a date night, go have dinner somewhere, go to, go to have a, a, a picnic in the park, go to the movies, do something fun, but you can drop your kids here, and we wanna invest in your marriage. We wanna make sure that every marriage has an opportunity for date nights, so be sure and be involved in that. You can register at gearcitychurch.com or on our social media. Another great thing that you've already heard about that's coming up is Go Time Sunday. On Go Time Sunday, November the 7th, we will not be in this building. We will not be meeting in person. But on that day, it's going to be an opportunity for you to spend time investing in somebody who does not have a relationship with Jesus. Our goal is that that day you will share the good news in a relationship with them. So we're going to invite you to be part of that day on Go Time Sunday. Now, here's what you gotta do. You, you, gotta, you gotta pray, you gotta fast, and you gotta ask somebody. You gotta go for the ask. Invite somebody to lunch. Invite somebody for a barbecue at your house. Have a bonfire and make s'mores. Invite another family to go to the zoo. But be sure the people you invite are people that you know might not have a church home, 
and spend the day with them. And what that means, it's actually putting the good news in action. It's not just talking about it, but it's being about it. So don't forget about Go Time Sunday on Sunday, November the 7th. We love the fact that you're part of us here at Gear City. If you have any questions at all, be sure and stop at guest services located out in the lobby. There's someone there who would love to answer your questions. And if you have that Connect card, drop it off there to get your free gift. We hope that you have an amazing week. Next week, we'll be wrapping up the series, Good News. So be sure and be here next week. You guys are dismissed. Have an awesome day.